Hello everyone, my name is Cephalon and welcome to another episode of Gaming Lounge. This Woo! time it's not gonna be a boring <laughs> Yeah, this day it's not gonna be a boring gaming lounge episode with just me talking. No, I'm gonna have the honor to introduce an important guest, guest, guest. And this guest, 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 guest. Please welcome, come, come. Chris! Hey. How are you? <laughs> How are you doing, Chris? It's probably the best introduction I think I've ever received. This is actually why it's cool to be on my gaming lounge, because I have the sound effects before post-production. <laughs> it's it's yeah. all live, it's all live. It's like exactly. a radio show. <laughs> exactly, it's all live. So we thought about playing Dungeon of the Enders, right? But before that, why don't you just introduce yourself, because I think a lot of my viewers don't know you. Okay. Like, well, the five viewers I have don't know you. <laughs> I mean, I'm right there with you. I'm working on growing my subscriber base, too. But uh, So I'm Chris Weiss. Uh, I am the creator slash developer slash project manager slash many other things for Affinity Archives. Uh, and if you've never heard of Affinity Archives, that's okay. Uh, we are a game development studio as well as a publishing house. So we produce a lot of YouTube cho shows and channels. Uh, and we're starting to dabble into getting into uh, book publishing and music publishing. So uh, we're a small but growing company. Book publishing? That sounds interesting. Yeah, we want to get into graphic novels, actually. Mmm, I see. Those anime style? Uh, or, it doesn't matter. I, it's it's kind of open to whatever kind of projects our authors and artists want to work on. Um, it's just a matter of getting the time and the money to fund them. Mm, I see. All right. And uh, actually, one thing where we, where I actually know you from, is the uh, you're the magic man behind the Arcane Duels channel, right? Oh yes, I, I've called myself the editor mage. Uh, <laughs> the editor mage, <laughs> <laughs> which seems okay. to have been taken up pretty well on the forums for uh, Mage Wars. Um, but yeah, I'm the guy that, that puts together all their footage and uh, makes it look pretty because I saw how they were editing that show before I jumped on board and I, I was like, I grabbed uh, Intangible uh, and I, I said, please, please let me edit this for you. I can fix it. <laughs> I can fix it. I can make it better. <laughs> and here I am like six, seven months later, something like that, and uh, they're still uh, using my, my editing talents, so... It's, uh, I it's, love it's the fun. intro. I love the intro. You did the intro, right? I, I did do the intro. We're actually working on, on rebranding some of the stuff and getting some new art in. Um, but uh, mm. that was my, my like, quick, uh, maybe, like, 15-hour project of slapping together all that art and making the little intro in. Oh, At least God. giving them something to open the show <laughs> with other than being like, Hi, everybody! <laughs> Like my show. Well, it's it's funny because <laughs> yeah. I've been doing a lot of research on YouTube and SEO kind of stuff lately, and uh, it turns out some of the most popular YouTubers don't even have an intro. All they do is start the camera and say, "Hey, everybody!" So now yeah, it makes to me. Honest, to be honest, that it, it's uh, there's some time. It's a lot of people within the first seven seconds. You've got to catch them. And exactly. If the intro doesn't doesn't appeal to you. You're just skipping, or you're like. Oh god, an intro. I just gonna watch another video. <laughs> yeah, but I like intros because it makes it seem more professional. Um, but yeah. on YouTube, I don't know if professional is the best uh, way to present yourself, which is very strange to me. Um, yeah. But it's, YouTube is a still a learning process for me. I got a lot more to figure out. Oh yeah, that that's true. Me me too. Actually, I just started. Uh, I don't know February with a couple of videos and. Uh, yeah, now I'm proud to present uh, a cooperational project <laughs> with Dungeon of the Endless. Yeah, I'm excited to play this game. It's been on my, my wish list for a while, and uh, this gave me a good excuse to actually pick it up and, and buy it. But uh, my, my disclaimer for everyone is that I have no idea how this game works yet. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm probably going to be pretty bad, but... Yeah. I like how uh, it, it says on the left side, choose your difficulty. Too easy or easy. It's not giving you, you know, normal or hard. No, it's gonna be easy. Or do you need it too easy? <laughs> 
It's it's almost <laughs> almost you need. patronizing, but yes. still funny enough to not be insulting. <laughs> so in this game, actually, I'm I'm gonna play the thug because she has sunglasses. It's gonna be awesome. <laughs> um, because well, you're you're in a spaceship. Okay, this is what we see. I don't know if you see me switching. Yep. So these spaceships, we are crashing on a planet, and we're crashing pretty deep. It's kind of hideous that we're crashing, I don't know, 15 floors deep, something? <laughs> and we have to get out of there. Oh. That's, that's the job, okay? That, that's basically... The, so the are, we, are we crashing oh. on purpose, or are we crashing uh, because something uh, went wrong? I am not sure. Maybe I there's mean, someone on board who made us crash on purpose. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's plot-wise. I don't know if this game really has any plot, but that's kind of one of those things that might be better left unsaid than anything. Yeah, exactly. And as you know, I don't know if you know the the uh, developer here from uh, this game. Uh, they have, I don't remember. Um, endless something. Oh God, I'm gonna Oops. look it up and put it on. Uh oh, don't don't don't. I'm trying to don't figure out there. how to move. Yeah, it's right click. Okay, let, let me tell you uh, what this this game does. So we have we're in the spaceship, right? Mm-hmm. And there is this yellow crystal which gives us energy, and the purpose of this game is to go from room to room and find the exit of this level. And once we find the exit, we grab the crystal and run to the exit to the next floor. Oh, okay. And this sounds easier said than done. <laughs> but um, so once we're in a room, you can just enter rooms. You cannot go anywhere else within a room. It's just like, oh cool, I found a uniform. Um, you can just enter a room. Don't open another one. And here is why: as soon as you open a room, monsters will spawn in every room that is not powered. Oh. Okay. Once we've defeated all the monsters, because they they will always go to our crystal and try to uh, destroy the crystal. Once we defeat all the monsters, we have all the time in the world until we open another door. Okay. okay. And that's why we're standing here and doing nothing. So I can power the room now with clicking on my mouse wheel. Yeah. So I I click the room. The room is powered. And we can safely... It, it uses up one of the dust resources. You see the resources on the top? Mm -hmm. The yellow one is dust. And it's dust in every game from this designer. The same as food and science and industry. Those resources, they have it in every game. Even in... in I don't know. What, what's it called? Uh, Endless Legend? Oh, okay. The same resources. They're going with it. It's really cool, actually. So now we can, while we're standing here, we can build stuff. So I can use on the top left, uh, bottom left. I don't know if your resources uh, change when I do this, but let's. I will put a industry generator here, which will increase my industry income. What's your industry income? It is. 21 plus 4. Okay, so you get the income, but you didn't use any of your resources, which is interesting. Okay. Hmm. On the bottom left, you have a couple of um, buildings. Well, mostly the prisoner pod under the sword menu. Mm -hmm. Prisoner prod? Yeah, prisoner prod. You can put this on any yeah socket within one room. It will attack enemies. Oh, okay. Oh, so once they pass by, because some rooms will will fork, and you will go right, and you'll have a door open at the top, and then monsters will pass by you if you don't have all rooms powered, and such as that. Gotcha. Should I build one in this room, or? Not... I think we can manage for now. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure what the best strategy for this game is yet, but it's it's sort <laughs> of like a. Sure. Hmm. I'm not really sure myself. <laughs> there so is it's... one thing in this game which is really weird, but we'll get to that probably. Okay. 
Okay, so anyway, so it's sort of like a uh, an active, um, what do you call it, like a tower defense, except we actually can run around and do stuff too. Yes, and you can right click on your portrait in the, on the top right. Oh. So you have an RPG element, which, which being, oh. being level up, so that's what you need food for. You have active skills, and if you hover over level up with your mouse, you can see the different attributes changing, or what it would change to. Huh. And at some level, they will also show you, I don't know, kind of a question mark next in your active skills for a new skill, for example. So you don't know what it is, but it will be there. That's that's actually pretty well done. I, I like this interface a lot. Oh yeah, it's really cool. And I actually found a guard uniform. I'm going to put it on. It gives me a 6 defense, speed minus 1, and increases my max HP to uh, 100 by 100. Nice. Cool. So I open the next door because I'm the bulky one. <laughs> so here are the monsters. Kill them all! Kill them all! So I could, um, I could uh, use Psycho Killer, which gives me attack power and speed for seven seconds. Could hmm. do it. And it has a cooldown of two open rooms. Oh, that's a cool cooldown method. Yes, it's like it makes yeah, it makes perfect sense for this game too. Because if it was based on time, it would be like okay, we clear the room and just sit here just for you know a minute or two. Exactly. So now you can you can for example click uh, your mouse wheel into this room. Oh. And you should build maybe a food replicator so we can level up at some point. Food replicator. Sound at German. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, there's food plus four. That's great. And so so do we yeah. gain resources every room that we enter? Exactly. Oh okay. That's so the it's, time variable, right? That's that's pretty cool. So it's sort of like a turn, except in a real time setting. Exactly. Now we gotta decide left, right, top, and I'm really interested where the exit is. The, the first floor is not going to be really big. If you scroll your mouse wheel out, you can see um, the layout hmm. and can see every room that's powered. And no monsters will spa uh, spawn within them, but you can only power as many rooms as you see dust on the top, right? Oh, okay. So... Can we, if we don't power a room, can we still open another room connected to that yes. room? Oh, yes, okay. Definitely. It just but means monsters that monsters can. can... Huh. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, so I could see how you could set yourself up to uh, get swarmed and pinned down pretty easily. Exactly. Because right here, if we hadn't, if we wouldn't have enough dust to power those three rooms around this room, and we open another door, all three rooms will spawn monsters. Hmm. And we'll go to the crystal through this one narrow passageway. Gotcha. So let me open the right door. Okay. Oh yeah. There are things. If they... Well, now you've changed... Exactly. So you had changed the room and the monster was already out of that room. Oh, I see. So you have to be in the room to actually fight them? Exactly. Once you're in the room, the hero will always know what to do. Gotcha. Okay, so we have powered this. I can't build something, but we should we should maybe build something at the um, food replicator. Sure. Because that's where, that's where every every single monster will go through. Gotcha. So, maybe some prisoner prods? Exactly. I built two of them. I'm gonna build one in the narrow room, too. You don't need to be in the room, I noticed just now. Oh, okay. Do it from anywhere. Okay. Well, that's all I can build for right now. Okay. So then shall we open this next door? Yes. 
I'll go first. I'm the barky one, as I said. <laughs> okay, and if you... Yeah, cool. Nice. Can we power this one? Yeah, we can. Huh. You choose top or right? Hmm. hmm. I'm gonna vote on the right. The right. What do you think is... The oh, a treasure chest. Oh. Waha. Uh -huh. Yeah, a restrainer added to my inventory. What? <laughs> Defense 9. A complicated jacket meant to restrain violent individuals makes good armor if left unbuckled. Nice. Defense 9, HP. Oh, what do I have? Defense 6, speed minus 1. Huh. Hmm. This may be interesting for you, or it doesn't really matter, does it? Can we trade equipment? Yeah, probably. Hmm. Uh, item safe for the next floor. Can I... How can I... Hmm. I don't know how to give you that. Give one. Oh, I can give you resources, though. Oh. Ooh. How did that happen? Yeah, I, I just saw that. How did you do that? Uh, so if you notice in the upper left corner, there's a player list button. Um, it'll ah. give us a little resource display. Whoa. What did you just do? I have no idea. Ah, I have, I have just... <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, we switched characters. Whoa. <laughs> that's uh, pretty wild. I don't know yeah, how we did that. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Uh. <laughs> I don't even know how to... Yeah. Oh, there we go. Okay, so that's what that... There's an option that says give selected hero. It literally is give your hero to the other player. Oh, I was clicking that for some reason. Nothing happened and then something happened. <laughs> oh, okay. So is there... Is there... Can you get... You have uh, the restrainer on now. Oh, I do? Mm-hmm. Oh, nice. So, can we get more heroes to control during the playthrough? Yes, we can. Oh, okay. So that explains why we would want to be able to trade heroes. Exactly. That's pretty so clever. At some point, so at some point, there will be um, merchants or other characters waiting. Oh, man, how do we find so many... Oh, dear. Got Come a in. couple Come of in. bugs. Run! Um. Ah. Bam! Oh. No, no need. <laughs> <laughs> Glad those I put those prods. prods in there. Oh man! So I got uh, crutchy, but I can't use it, and I can't. Well, can you give me your hero again? Sure. Uh, oh yeah. That works. Can you? Oh no, you have a. Mm, I see. You also have a ranged weapon. Nope, doesn't oh. matter. Okay. What is, in your opinion, actually the the most important thing in a uh, indie game? Oh. Oh my, that's a one character. Speaking of which, by the way. Oh, nice. So that's a pretty big question. Uh... Oh, he's a merchant. Oh. Oh, that's nice. Okay, so we'll trade him food for stuff. Crutchy used chitin guard uniform. So I could use a device? Dehydrated water. No, I'm, I think I'm just gonna level up. Because I have a guard uniform. I don't want the other one. Yeah, I'm and kinda I right use, there with you. And I can't use the crutchy anyway. So I'm gonna do a level up Oh, I have a paramedic ability. 
Ooh. I heal. Oh, I heal all the heroes in a room. Ah, nice. Okay, so what makes a good indie game? Uh, so that's a big question because a lot of people still don't quite know how to define what an indie game is. Um, so I think at the end of the day, probably one of the most important things about an indie game is that it needs to uh, deliver something different that uh, that you know trip that we don't see in a AAA title. Um, and what that basically means is indies have the benefit of um, they have the benefit of not having, you know, a publisher hounding on their back to do things to appease a market or, uh, you know, do things that are going to sell well enough to make money to, you know, fund a company that employs 500 people. Um, so basically what that means is that they have room to experiment and do things that would be considered high risk. Mm -hmm. um, I know what you mean. And that's that's huge because um, you know if you go back like a decade, that was not something that people did willingly. Uh, N Nintendo is probably one of the few massive developers or massive studios that is willing to experiment with things, and they get a lot of flack for their consoles. Um, but I think it's amazing that they're willing to try new things, even if some of them are kind of gimmicky or weird, you know. Uh, yeah. So. So and and what happens when an indie developer doesn't make something that's uh, you know new or interesting or risky or any of those things? Uh, what we often end up seeing is just a lot of clones, and people don't like seeing clones very often. Um, and so, so when an indie makes a clone game, it's usually just kind of viewed as oh well, they're just an amateur developer they don't really know what they're doing, they're just cloning a game so they can learn how to make a game. And that's not always the case, but, um, you know, that's kind of the perception of it, in my opinion. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, I, it makes sense. <clears throat> I, I would have answered this a little smaller. I, I didn't have so much to say, <laughs> to be honest, so, on that well, question. What's, what is your opinion on it? I'm actually curious to hear what you have to say. <clears throat> I think... Um, Indie games, yes, I, I totally agree that um, being an indie game developer, you can have, you can do, or how do you say, uh, you can actually commit to more risk. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of big companies like to go with things that they know are going to work. Mm -hmm. For example, that's why we have, I don't know, the 20th Call of Duty uh, game <laughs> and the 50th Assassin's Creed game. And even even with uh, those games, they still got a lot of flack when they were like, "Okay, we're gonna do future stuff now." And there's gonna be there, run, 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 run. Oh god! Uh, oh god! Come on, stop shooting. Just run. Oh! Oh, oh wow! Just did it! Just did it! Yeah, I Woo. forgot that we were spawning enemies from the side. Wow. Okay, there I really can see how quickly this how. This game could get tough very, very quick. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm gonna make wish. another one of those prisoner prods. Yeah, and I'm gonna uh, do a science character. Okay, where was I? Um, yeah, they can take those risks. Um, big companies tend not to do so. Um, they are more concerned with increasing numbers mm -hmm. and and sales and all that. And but if I if I look at indie development itself, not comparing to the triple A uh, developers like Blizzard or EA, whatever, uh, I feel like as an indie game, yes, you should deliver something different. Um, I always like it when indie games come up with new sort of gameplay. Okay, new ideas how to do things. Oh man. Let them just come in here and get a... Bam. You know. Oh, they <sighs> broke our thing. Yeah, they did. They I did, and we realize. don't get the resources back, which is a shame. Eesh. Mm. Yeah, the crystal back here in, in the narrow room up here, mm -hmm. it actually um, gave you the opportunity to research uh, a new oh. module. Change your module and research it. 
So I'm gonna try to power some uh, some rooms. Okay, so that's that pretty cool. Less enemies, less enemies can spawn. Mm -hmm. We have much dust. Can we hmm. heal? No, I don't need heal. Should put down another prod. So yes, the indie games should come up with new things that haven't been there. Mm -hmm. And I feel indie games, it's always interesting to see what you can do. I, For example, I like board games. And I've been a computer gamer ever since, actually. And in board games, I'm amazed at all the things you can do with just a board and, and different mechanics and, and cards and some rules. Okay, here mm -hmm. in a computer, you have so much stuff that you can do. Either you can do it um, with programming and so on. And a lot of things, I mean, we are already at high-end graphics. Why do I need another high-end Assassin's Creed graphic? I don't see <laughs> much I don't see much difference anymore between Call of Duty 2, Call of Duty Black Ops and whatever. Mm -hmm. and, and what they're all called. Please don't phrase me on that because I... <laughs> please don't quote me on that. I have no idea about Call of Duty. <clears throat> But the thing here is that they are graphically very appealing, yes, but the gameplay is always the same. And yeah. I don't feel a good I don't I feel like a good game shouldn't need or nowadays doesn't need high end graphics anymore. Yeah, and, and good graphics does not make a good game either. No. It it can make it, you know, um, more appealing or it could make it you know you could use even the graphics as a reward for some things um but yeah at the end of the day it's not what's going to make a game worth playing <laughs> graphics as a reward as you say that i have to think about evil land where you play the game i haven't played it but <laughs> where you play the game and you start off in 2d and go over to i don't know super nintendo snes graphics and then you go over to, you know, the first Super Mario 64 kind of, um, uh, what's it called, kind of graphics. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, and we found the exit. Oh, okay, I was wondering what that was. Now, this is going to be interesting because we're going to do a couple things. And we actually have this, this thing which I find awkward, and I feel still this is deliberate in the game design. If you if you zoom out, you can see the whole room layout, right? Mm -hmm. So there's no need for us to go to the right or to the top. Mm -hmm. And if we power all those rooms, those three rooms over the, to the left, we do not... Um, no monsters will spawn coming towards us. Oh, okay. So basically what we can do is we take off all the power in the rooms we don't need and just power all the rooms in our way. Oh, okay. I didn't even realize we could take power away from those rooms. Oh, yes, you can. Just oh. need to... Just middle-click it? Yes. Huh. That's actually pretty cool. That way. And we have two rooms over so we can power the two next to us, so the one who takes the crystal has the most time ever to get through this room you're standing in and then walk to the other room. I'll be behind you while you run with it. Because <laughs> you're quicker. You could just quicker on your feet. Uh, I'm going to go here and make sure you're not being killed. Good plan. All right, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. So now yeah, in every room, stupid. monsters will spawn. I think every room. I, I like that you can change the where we place the light to because um, it allows us to change our tactics as we go through the dungeon. And I imagine yes. as we get deeper into the game and, and uh, you know there's a lot more rooms to explore, that becomes really, really essential to uh, be able to do. Okay, so I'm in the room. I don't know if I need to... Oh, okay. Did I just hit this exit button? Bam! Yes! Onward and upward. 
achievement unlocked. Yes, I didn't die in my first time playing this. This is already yeah. an improvement. <laughs> this is actually, this is good because I did. <laughs> uh, it's always in those games you die so quickly. Mm. But this is, this is, I like this game because it's an interesting genre mix, okay? You have this RPG element, you have this tower defense aspect, and you have this rogue light thing which was really really popular in the last two years oh yeah oh without a doubt people have been going crazy over the roguelite kind of format i actually started when i saw tb going with this wtf on dungeons of breadmore ah okay nathan showed me that one or intangible as you know him yeah and i i like the game uh i like dungeons of dreadmore i actually was thinking about doing uh some gaming lounge episode on this maybe later at some point um we should first try to build a generator because we can we can cover all uh all what comes against us right now that is totally fair oh Damn. you have more resources oh i've got a lot of resources right now you actually had, you had more than me <laughs> you really did oh i will level up then nice <laughs> I see how it is. Well, you're doing most of the uh, combat anyway, so that's actually a pretty good idea. Oh, I can't. I have a new passive skill, which is Soylent Green. Um, food plus 0.2 by killed monsters. <laughs> you know, Soylent <laughs> is, a, is a real product that uh, is being developed right now. Oh, no, I didn't it's, know. It's literally a liquid meal that uh, their claim is that you could live off of only eating Soylent. <laughs> I think they ran okay. a Kickstarter or something for it, too. It oh, was a pretty fun God. idea. But uh, for people like me that are always working and I'm like, I don't want to spend time to cook food. It's like, ooh, maybe I could do this. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't trust that people will actually live if they eat that. <laughs> Oh, this looks like a self-powered room. Oh, or did you nice. power it? No, I didn't do anything. At least I don't I think so. Uh, and I don't know what's wrong with this room. Uh, huh. Yeah, maybe that's I all this a, room has. I have a surviving kit, actually. Which I can... Oh, cool. Um, <clears throat> I have a surviving kit, which increases my wit by two. And defense by five, and HP regen by two, and it gives me the repair ability. Can repair damage modules. Ooh. I also like the flavor text that's underneath those skills. To Silent Green, for example, it's it's probably edible if you hold your nose. <laughs> that's kind of fantastic. <laughs> yeah, it is. You just get a power boost when their mates are nearby. Okay, that that's that's not so cool. <laughs> I cannot build anything. I have 20 resources and I can't build. Do you have five uh, industry? I do, and I can give you that. Bam. Should we go for food replicator or science creator? Um, well, I haven't been able to do anything with my science yet, so I think that would be kind of nice. And I'm really, really close to leveling up too, so I think after one more room I'll be able to do that, and then I won't really care about food for a little bit. Okay, then I go with the science creator, and we hope we find a crystal, so we can. We don't need to defend this room because no monster will be going into this room. Nice. Because the crystal is on the right. You just need to have it powered up. Yeah, that's a pretty safe it's bet. A, yeah, it's a dead end. So, well, that's actually design-wise, that's an interesting I idea of having a dead end room like that, especially with it being self-powered, because uh, now it's just a free zone that we can, you know, put stuff in that we don't have to worry about. So I actually like that. Ooh, the steely. Can you right-click that? Uh, yeah. Heroes on the floor gain attack power and reduced speed. Each turn, yes. steel loses health points when it's destroyed. The effect ends. Oh, okay. So it's it's a limited thing, but if we decide to fight while we're in that room, we uh, gain attack power. It I'm even like. slower now. Oh, so it, does that a, a, a ability oh, affect oh, us oh. across rooms? <laughs> yeah, it's, I think it's the whole floor. Huh. <laughs> but look at this. I'm so slow. Oh. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh. I'm gonna go back. Don't make me walk. 
normally in games when they make you move slowly like that, it really uh, bothers me because I feel as though uh, it just slows down the game in a way that's not fun. But yes. in a game like this, it uh, it actually has a huge tactical, um, like, I guess design-wise benefit, but you know, gameplay-wise disadvantage. You should, you should really right-click this Ooh, to get okay. um, <clears throat> to to check the modules. I don't know. Do, do you have the same modules there? Uh, I have a food replicator number two. I have a dust gain, dust field gen one, a key IP mm -hmm. cannon or KIP cannon, and a holo hollow hero. Holo hero. <laughs> so is the hollow hero just like a decoy? Yeah. Ha. It absorbs 150 HP of damage before deactivation. Yeah, it, it's it looks nice, but. I wouldn't go with that. I mean, it's. I feel decoys in most games are, yeah, nice to have, not really necessary. Yeah, Maybe, they don't make I a don't huge know difference. How much, I don't know how much science you have, but a food replicator too might be interesting, or the K KIP cannon. So I can't afford the food replicator, but I have. But I can I've, also give you science. Exactly. So I have thirty-eight right now, and I need forty-six. So I need. Uh, eight more. Nice! Yeah, you have ten. Analyze. Done. Yeah, that takes a couple of rooms to open until it's researched. Oh, okay. I'm gonna go... I'm gonna continue our quest to find the exit. Oh! Oh, dang! Oh, yeah! <laughs> Back to killer. Oh, I can level up, Sex I think. Again. Yes! Bam! Congratulations! Oh, wow. There's the exit! Oh, so now, here's the thing. Now, we can decide whether or not we, we open more rooms, right? Mm hmm. Or we could go for the exit. So the benefit of opening more rooms would be um, gathering resources and finding equipment? Exactly. Or other uh, team members as well. Oh, that's right. Well, in that case, I definitely vote that we open more rooms. Okay, let's, let's do it. Let's open more rooms and wander through the sewers. That's what it looks like. Okay, food replicator. Ooh, dear. Oh, interesting. So not all the enemies go into the, uh, uh, they don't go straight to the crystal? Uh, some of them, but I'm not sure. Are we clear? I think I there's one more room up here. Yeah, but clear of monsters. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we've been lighting most of these rooms, actually. Very good. And it's an interesting design choice because you gotta think about... Oh yeah! Hey, hey! There you go! Do we have enough food? I have 24. I have 13. Which makes not enough. That's just barely not enough. Although we could just go through a couple more rooms and then yeah. uh, build exactly. that up. I'm gonna go top now. Maybe. So, how do you feel about the movement controls in this game? Um, mm, you mean the right click or? Yeah, like, so we basically can't move uh, exactly where we click. We can only move to a room, and our character just kind of moves into an, just a place set for the character in that yeah. room. Um, I, think... I actually like it because it gets rid of a lot of micromanagement. Mm, that's and fair. I feel like with the. Um, with the modules and the way you have to uh, think about how to place your uh, towers and your prods and and which way to go I feel like this it would be unnecessary to you know go to the upper left corner of this specific room to activate something it gets rid of unnecessary clutter I, I actually agree 
Um, when I first, when we first started playing the game, I actually didn't like it because it seemed counterintuitive, and I was like, mm -hmm. "Why can't I move? I don't. Yeah. I can't figure out how to move because, you know, I I can't go into a specific spot." Um, but the more we play it, the more I realize the reason why it works is because there's never anything super specific in a room that we need to investigate. So exactly. removing that control from the player actually is a benefit because that way we don't spend a lot of time just clicking around everything and seeing if we can interact with it. Exactly. So it's, I think it's pretty smart design-wise. It's counterintuitive, but it's good design, which is, I think, the first time I've ever said that. <laughs> <laughs> the merchant is selling... Uh, stuff? Hip, a hipster scarf. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect! Uh, I don't have enough science, though. Wear, the, wear this if you want them to hit you first. <laughs> <laughs> That's absolutely fantastic. I live but they can uh, vacuum. Living living in Chicago, I live in uh, like the absolute most hipster neighborhood in in the city, <laughs> and so don't say this too loud online, okay? <laughs> well, I, I I'm not too worried. I don't think anyone's gonna find me. But uh, it's it's just funny because I see hipsters all the time, and uh, I, I mean I unfortunately am probably a hipster too, but. I try not to be snobby. Da, 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 da. I got a scent Fitch. You got what? The V. But the V, not with A. Speed minus five. Yeah, that's perfect <laughs> for me. Oh, but it man. Has not considered edible by most sentient beings, this snack requires teeth capable of chewing gravel. On the plus <laughs> side, it tastes like vodka. <laughs> That is uh, one of the most interesting descriptions I think I've heard in a while. <laughs> do, you, do you do you want to have the scent pitch? Sure. Hey, uh, I'm gonna give you my selected hero. And you're gonna give me your selected hero. Uh, oops, I that's the I wrong did. one. <laughs> Bam! There we go. Perfect. Okay. There you get the sandwich. Makes you slower. Yes. <laughs> Are you too fast for your own good? My character is pretty quick. It's kind of nice. I chose this character because her stats looked like they were the most balanced. Um, yeah. <laughs> and since I've never played this game, I was like, it's probably not a good idea to min-max. Oh my, there are a lot of monsters. Oh dear! <laughs> Oh no, don't kill this guy! No, no, no! I want to hire him! Oh god! I need more! I need help! I'm kid I'm dead! Almost! Almost! Oh no, oh hey, no! Hey! They're, they're- I can't heal the hero anymore because- There! How many really? are there? Oh, man. Oh god, I had to heal myself for 30 food until I finally- Oof. Yeah, so much for uh, hiring the uh, this yep. uh, guy Let's we found. Just, it's just us. It's just us. We're all alone here. Why is this guy even here? I mean, <laughs> we crashed here. Floor, I don't know how deep. Actually, that and is a good question. How did all these people get here? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And why is this conveniently a dungeon with doors? <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, maybe we crashed onto some, like, ancient sci-fi city or something. But uh, even oh, with that... Oh, more monsters, more monsters. Ah! Oh, Whoa. God. Who is this? Is that a monster? I don't have Berserker Rage. Uh, I mean, Psycho Killer. Oh, no. Kill him, kill him, kill him! No, oh, no, no, no! God. Oh no, oh no, oh no! Kill me, not this! Kill me, not that! Come on! They, they, by the way, they killed the guy. Uh, I tried so hard to keep him alive. Come on, come on! No! Oh god! Ah, oh, barely. Whew! Well. It could have gone better. Could have gone worse, though. Yeah, how about we open this room here in between now? 
Yeah. But I can repair this thing. Heh <laughs> heh. Oh, nice. That's right, I forgot you got that ability. I have this ability, and I will use it. <laughs> I'm not afraid to. So how do you feel about uh, pixel art in games? I mean, obviously we're playing a pixel art game, but... Yeah, yeah. It, it, I mean, there's some games in which it is... Mm. This was the last door, by the way. Oh, uh -oh. nice. I need help. I need help. Oh boy. Wait, I can heal. Yeah. Uh, I just put down some prods. Um, in some games, it's beneficial. In some games, it's unfortunately not really beneficial. I, I or, suppose I'm then the question sure. is in, in in what way? I'm not. I'm not quite sure. I mean, in, in games like these, I like the little turrets. It gives me this this old Commander Conquer vibe, hmm. where mm -hmm. where those uh, towers or barracks that we had uh, would be all pixel. <laughs> um, in some other games, I don't know. I I feel like it's it's some sort of an art form as well. People who can do it. It's really cool, and I feel like it's also a question on what you can afford. Hmm, okay, that's that's definitely fair. So, I, I love pixel art because back, back in the uh, good old Super Nintendo days, or just mm. original Nintendo days, pixel art was necessary because of hardware limitations. Um, and they, it, it was interesting because they, should I pick this up and uh, should we run for it? I try to power as many rooms as possible. I'm gonna depower. Oh, this room is powered by a mysterious force. Okay. I am actually ready. I think. All right, we're doing it. Do you have? Do you have? Whoa. Okay. I was just gonna ask if you have food, but let's not get into that. There is no time for lunch. I can give you food. Bam. Have some food. Okay, cool. You're gonna need it more than me. <laughs> uh, yeah, I need, I need, I need more food, actually. I actually I... got to die here. Because I'm too slow. There. Oh, I think I gave you the wrong resource. But I gave you oh. food now. Oh, uh, you died. Oh, no. Am I, am I, I just by myself now? I think so, yeah. Oh, no. But we're over 40 minutes, so... Okay, actually, that's... 45 minutes, so that, that's actually a pretty good time. Cool. Do you want to call Perfect. it here? Yeah, I think we call it here, and uh, maybe if uh, some folks are interested, and we might do something again, right? Yeah, oh, definitely. I, I had a blast doing this, and uh, it's, it's fun talking with someone that I don't know much about, too, because uh, everyone else on the shows that I'm with, you know, I... I see them every other day, so it's like, well, what, what interesting know, things can I bring up, you know? I know you. I don't need to ask this question. <laughs> I'm not interested, actually, to hear it again. Yeah. <laughs> and again, and again, and again. Oh, dear. <laughs> so, d did you actually like uh, Dungeon of the Endless? I am your, going to... Impression? So, I think this game is a fine example of what makes a great indie game. Uh, coming full circle back to your full first question. Um, so this this game not only takes a lot of familiar game design components that, that we've seen in a lot of games already, and it mixes them in a very, very interesting way. And then it even takes a modern spin on it and uh, it makes it uh, unique. It makes it very much its own game. Um, and I think because of that, it makes this game something very special and it makes it uh, engaging in a lot of ways and paired with the beautiful pixel art um, I think this game has a perfect theme a perfect uh, um, uh, what's a good word to describe it um, mood. mood feeling yeah yeah it, it sets its scene very well it knows what it's doing it feels like a nicely polished full package um, and it's just well designed all around so I know that after we're done Recording. I'm gonna probably go and play this some more because I I'm already hooked. <laughs> I think floor five was the 
was the first furthest I've come so far. Um, I like that you can play this in multiplayer actually, because usually you see those games and you can only play them in single player mode. But mm -hmm. this one uh, is a lot of fun to play with with a friend or with a colleague or whoever. Yeah, <clears throat> because I, I agree. Because you have to think about a clear strategy and have to come up in a team. Okay, how how are we going to do this so we can carry this crystal uh, over to this exit now? Or I mean, which way are we going? And we can't just randomly open any door mm -hmm. or many doors. And that, that even by itself sets it apart from a lot of other games, um, a lot of other roguelike games, because they don't often have cooperative elements. And so having that in this game um, makes it that much more interesting, too. So I, I agree. I, I really like that. Yeah. <laughs> I find it funny that um, the game... Uh, I, I'm just going to let you run here if you want to go. Oh, so. sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, I really like it that they also kept to their resource system, which they use in um, Endless Legend as well. I always wanted to play Endless Legend, but never got around to it too much, because there's so many information and I really need some time to get into it. Yeah, I think Endless Legend was the first of, of uh, their games that I saw, and I think uh, Nathan was showing me that game and I was... I was intrigued, but I never actually get picked it up and played it, but uh... I'm really intrigued as well, however, the one thing that bugs me about that game is the combat system. Yeah. But I might get into it in another gaming lounge episode, or might even do a perfect game video on it. I'm not sure the perfect game video that I should be doing is Civilization V, because I've played this, I don't know, 160 hours more more i think and it, i really love this game but right now i'm working on some other uh perfect game videos nice um and yeah i'm to the end of it i'm really glad that we could do this finally yeah i'm, I'm happy we finally got around to it too because we've been talking about it for a little while and it uh yeah it's hard to line up our schedules with me being in Chicago and you being in Germany. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And um, with that, I would say we call it. And for everyone who watched, thank you for watching. If you want to know more about Chris, go to Game Devs Play Games, right? Yep, uh, you can check out my our main channel is Game Devs Play Games on YouTube. Otherwise, just head over to affinityarchives.com and uh, we you can see all the things we're working on there, all of our shows or all of our games. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, we, we update the website pretty regularly, so any new projects we start will be on there. All right. And uh, remind me to put your link in the description if you <laughs> if you don't know what we were talking about before. We were also talking about Arcane Duels. The Arcane Duels channel uh, is an awesome channel where they put out Mage Wars videos, a board game, card game kind of thing, where Chris does the uh, intro and all the animations, mm -hmm. which is a really fine work. And if you want to see more and go to their channels or subscribe to me or whatever, you'll find us. All right. Cool. Have a good have a good day or good night or wherever you are and what time it is. <laughs> you too. Thanks for having me. Goodbye. Thanks for being here.